My name is Marvella Ford. I am Associate Director of Cancer Disparities in the Hollings Cancer Center, and I'm also a professor in the Department of Public Health Sciences. Disparities research is really a hot topic now in this whole issue of health disparities because minorities are quickly becoming a numeric um, majority. So in the next 50 years, um, non-European Americans will outnumber European Americans in the United States. And so the health issues that these communities face will become of paramount importance. Healthcare disparities basically refer to differences in access to healthcare, differences in the treatment that occurs once people are able to enter healthcare systems, and differences in outcomes. There have been uh, multiple studies that have been shown to prove the fact that um, when communities have good access to healthcare, um, good access to high quality healthcare, and public health measures that promote health, such as walking trails, that the health of the whole community increases as a result, not just different segments of the community. I grew up with a curiosity about um, disease processes and then just learning more about um, population health um, through education that I was exposed to and trying to understand why certain groups of people seem to experience some diseases at such a devastating rate and why the disease processes seem to be so different in some groups than in other groups. Some of the factors include personal factors. Certainly, we have to take responsibility for our own health. Um, we have to eat properly. We have to get the proper amount of rest, um, build in physical activity whenever possible, um, just into our daily routine, as well as structured physical activity. Um, but there are also other issues like access to care, more structural issues. And there are genetic factors that contribute as well, yes. So some, some segments of the population don't have access to health care insurance. If people are working an hourly wage, sometimes there's no um, health insurance that's provided. And so if they, sometimes people are afraid to take a day off work, to take care of themselves, to go to the doctor because they'll lose a day's pay or half a day's pay. And that can mean the difference between um, what they see as maybe being selfish and seeing a doctor for themselves or putting food on the table. We work with communities and really we, st we stress the idea that um, taking care of ourselves is not, it's not being selfish. It's not uh, something that we, we do um, at the expense of other things. It's something that we do to allow us to continue doing what we're doing. If we don't take care of ourselves, we won't be around for our own children and grandchildren um, in the future. And so we try to really emphasize the notion that taking care of ourselves, um, we want to take care of our bodies in the same way that we take care of our cars. We get the oil changed, we get the tires rotated. Do we get our cancer screenings on a regular basis? Do we take care of our bodies? with the same loving care that we take care of our cars. It was really difficult growing up as a child and not knowing any of my grandparents on either side of the family because they passed away before I was born. So I never knew my mother's parents or my father's parents. Um, and I was um, 36 when my mother passed away and 40 when my father passed away. So um, just feeling the impact of health disparities on a personal level is what drives me every day to come to work to try to find solutions to the problems. We know there are solutions and the solutions often exist in the community and in the academic settings and in the clinical settings and if we can bring the groups together, the key stakeholders together, we can find solutions to these health disparities. And my goal every day is to help another family enjoy each other for a longer period of time.